Hey everyone, it's Adam here with another video. I haven't done a video in a while now because I've been in all these crazy remote places working on expedition cruises uh, since June of this year and I have a tiny break. I'm actually about to leave this morning to go for another 30 days. So I wanted to shoot this video to show you some cool places I've been in the North Atlantic in Canada that are very hard to get to. So there's a chance you may not ever see them for yourself. I hope you do, of course, but there's a chance most people won't see these places. I didn't get the most amazing footage in the world because I was actually working. Uh, so I got what I could and I was thinking, oh, I gotta show everybody on YouTube this when I, when I get back home. And I'm home right now, just briefly, I'm literally in 15 minutes heading for the train, then the plane to do another 30 days up in the Arctic. So uh, it's crazy, <laughs> but um, anyways, I wanted to make this quick video for you. The first bit is me actually on the ship, just introducing the video. I was pretty tired, so I was like, I gotta do something now and just like talk to you. Cause uh, I was pretty tired. <laughs> it was a long stretch, I don't know, 37 days or something and the days are very full. So I was like, you know, with my phone doing a little tired video, introducing everything, but you'll see that and then you'll see the footage after that. Here are some amazing places that I love that are very remote, hard to get to. One you can drive to, the other three, boat only. And if you have a plane kicking around, you can take a plane, I guess. But anyways, here you go, enjoy. I'm up in Nunavut. I've been on a uh, long series of expedition cruises. Um, a little over a month, which feels sometimes in ship life, like, you know, about a year's time. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I just wanted to show you in this video some highlights of the middle of nowhere Canada. I'm on the ship right now. It's early in the morning. I had a little break. This is a small boat. There's only room for about 150 to 200 passengers. And yeah, we've landed somewhere in Nunavut. We just got here. We've been in uh, Labrador for a long time now. Anywho, uh, enjoy this video. Cheers. Number one definitely has to be Sable Island. Off the coast of Nova Scotia, this humanless tiny sliver of land, often called the Smile of the Atlantic, uh, is home to massive seal colonies and wild horses. It's uh, over 150 kilometers away from the nearest mainland, which would be Nova Scotia in Canada. Uh, it's only about 49 kilometers long and at its maximum width it's 1.3 kilometers. So at any point on this island you can pretty much see both sides of it. It's home to wild horses. So these wild horses were originally brought here in the 1760s from the British when they were deporting the Acadians from Nova Scotia. They basically offloaded a bunch of workhorses here and that became the wild pack that you know turned into what it is today. There's been various scientific efforts over time to you know help the help the herd out and the population has fluctuated you know it's gone from the, at its height over 600 some animals it's currently just over 300 animals uh, they have a short life expectancy you know eight to nine years in the wild they basically live off the the grass here the marum grass it's called and uh, you know, washed up algae that comes in off the ocean. It's also been called the graveyard of the Atlantic. Many shipwrecks have washed up here. Uh, it was a navigational hazard for you know centuries as people were navigating these waters from Europe. And you can still find debris here uh, to this day from old wrecks and all kinds of things that crashed and washed up onto the shores of this amazing place. Uh, the landscape is totally surreal. You know, when you're out here, it feels like you're in the desert, and then you see all these wild horses, and it kind of blows your mind. It's extremely difficult to get here. It's a national park reserve as of 2013, and you can only get here through the park system, which is either by private charter or boat, and in my case, these expedition cruise ships. So people wait years to get here just to set foot on Sable, uh, and. Uh, it, you can see why once you show up for yourself and see the imagery that you get. It's a really amazing place. I hope you get to see it one day, a place totally forgotten by time and without any influence from humanity. Francois, Newfoundland. It's spelt Francois, but it's pronounced Francois. This is a beautiful place that you can only get to by ferry. Uh, I think the ferry comes once a day. It's a few hours ride from the nearest place in Bergio. And you know, during the resettlement phase of Newfoundland in the 1960s, a lot of these tiny communities were resettled to bigger centers, but some of these places stayed uh, remote and away from the big centers, and this is one of them. So there are no roads here. You can only get here by boat. There's about 90 people, give or take, that live here. And uh, 
The streets, you know, they're only suitable really for ATVs. They're very tiny and narrow. Uh, ATVs or snowmobiles and uh, boats are, those are all the main vehicles you have here. It's all you really need. Uh, but the feel here is amazing. It's like stepping back in time, a couple decades. People are, you know, very salt of the earth, super friendly. And uh, the hospitality you get here is kind of like nothing else. It's, you can only find it in tiny places like this. I wish I had some more pictures of, of this place to show you, but uh, hopefully this gives you an idea. Like I say, I was working, I couldn't take a ton of photos. So uh, anyways, France by Newfoundland is a gem and one that's actually a lot easier to get to than Sable Island. So I hope you can get here someday and check it out for yourself. The town of Woody Point, I couldn't help but throw this one in as well. You can actually drive to Woody Point, though it's very, you know, it's very out of the way. Uh, you can also get here by ferry. Uh, it's surrounded by beautiful Grossmoor National Park, which is, you know, just huge mountains, great hikes, lots of great scenery, and it's under the shadow of the Tablelands. Uh, these, you know, reddish orange colored rocks you're seeing right now. So it's a community of about 250 people. It's a thriving community. It's a small one, but thriving. Uh, it's very similar in the feel and the look of many outports around Newfoundland. Like you look at Woody Point, and you're like, yeah, this is a Newfoundland place. Uh, but the difference is the tablelands that are right there. Uh, the tablelands are gorgeous, but they were once part of the Earth's mantle, forged about 500 million years ago and pushed up through the Earth's crust. Super ancient rock. So it's a real treat to see uh, the tablelands, and if you can get up for a hike in one, I would highly recommend it. But the good news is you can actually drive there, so I had to throw one in where you could drive to. All right, now for the last stop, Hebron, Labrador. You've probably never heard of Hebron. It was my first time hearing about it on this trip as well. Labrador is a gorgeous, mysterious place, a land of icebergs, uh, forgotten coastlines, just an incredible place. Forgotten by time is, you know, a term that's often used. Like many little spots along the Labrador coast, there's all kinds of, you know, relics of old buildings that where people tried to settle back in the day and just abandon it. Um, so this is one of those places where you can see old relics lying around. And on top of that, there's several graveyards here. Uh, one of them being an Inuit graveyard, which is really interesting to see. They would just bury their dead by piling stones on, the, on top of the body. And, uh, you know, of course, the Inuit also left cairns around, which you see all over the north. They can be seen here as well. Labrador is gorgeous, mystical, magical. It's slowly becoming my favorite place. Uh, and it's, you know, like I was saying, the modern day and ancestral home of the Inuit people who are still very much here and uh, know the coastline very well. Uh, and to the rest of, of the world, it's very unknown. Uh, so it's an interesting place. You can only get here by boat. And if you happen to be along the Labrador coast at some point, make sure you stop into Hebron because it's gorgeous there. <laughs>